Welcome back. As you can see, I've made a good bit of progress on B2 since my last video. I've completed all four of the drives, I've attached them to the frames, and I've completed the wiring umbilical between the drive motor and servo and the main frame. In addition, I've started working on some of the body lift mechanism, although that's going to be taking a back seat, as I'm going to begin work on the electronics. More on that in a little bit. Let me show you a little bit more detail about what I've done to the drives uh, to get them hooked up. So in my last video, I hadn't yet implemented the strain relief system that helps relieve uh, some of the stress from the servo when the drives are being lifted. And uh, here you can see how the system works. It uses this long elastic tubing uh, that runs down below and through that cross beam there. It goes up over these pulleys and then through the structure out these side holes and then wraps around that specialized piece there. Um, and that's, uh, it has some ridges on the other side that help grip the tubing and uh, keep it from pulling back out. The idea being that it relieves some of the strain on the servo and it has to be tension adjusted based on the weight of the droid, which is obviously going to change between now and when it's completed. For now though, I have that uh, implemented as described and I think it's going to be pretty effective. The next uh, challenge that I had to resolve was uh, how to set up these drives so that I could disconnect them and remove them if needed for maintenance or, or replacement of parts. Uh, the servo cable was relatively easy. Um, the servo cable that's attached to the servo itself is long enough to reach into this little elbow space. And so I simply uh, added some servo extension cables um, where I put the, the connection point right there. The motors, on the other hand, were a little bit trickier. Um, I've used Anderson power poles in the past, but they were way too bulky to put any sort of a disconnect there. And because the wiring runs under the sliding bearing there and the linear rail, um, it really needed to have a disconnect somewhere outboard of that particular connection point. I thought about using bullet connectors. Uh, they are definitely low profile, but they're also very difficult uh, to reach in a tight spot. Um, so uh, it turns out, though, that another builder in the B2 Builders Club had mentioned uh, these little 90 degree uh, quick connect uh, uh, crimp connectors. And uh, they're sized just right for these particular motors. And uh, that made a whole lot of sense to use that as the uh, disconnect point. So um, I was able to crimp those on and, uh, and then run the wiring all the way through the elbow, under the sliding bearing, and then it comes up the other side, and then through the little hole on these trays, and then you can run it wherever you need to go. And I'm still working out the finals of where these things are going to reside, but. Uh, but for now, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's very low profile. It's not going to be any problem fitting the skins over that connection point. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. So here's a closer look at the 90 degree connectors that I used for the motors. I picked these up from DigiKey and I'll include a link in the description below. They can accommodate up to 16 gauge wire, which is convenient because that's the size wire that I was going to use for my motors anyway, because it's the largest size ferrule that will fit into the connectors on the motor controllers. And I was able to simply use my regular uh, DuPont connector crimper. The largest uh, die there uh, says that it goes down to 18 gauge, but I was able to crimp the 16 gauge wire without much problem. One difference with these connectors though, unlike the DuPont connectors, is they only have one crimp area. They don't have a separate crimp that wraps around the insulation. So in this case, you're going to be crimping just to the wire, and uh, that's the reason why I added the shrink uh, uh, tubing around the connector as well, just to add that extra strain relief and to keep it nice and neat. So with all of that out of the way, my next major goal is to get him actually moving. But that involves, of course, a lot of electronics and control systems. So while I waited for that stuff to arrive, I started working on some of the body lift mechanism. Um, this is still very much a work in progress. Those parts are mostly just dry fitted together. But this is the, the lower lift mechanism. Uh, and over there on the shelf is part of the upper lift mechanism. And uh, this is going to, uh, there's a Lazy Susan in here. 
Uh, that is the uh, spinning interior portion of B2's body. Um, and then there's going to be some linear rails that the uh, that whole mechanism slides up and down on. Uh, and one of the reasons that I'm kind of holding off on this, not only because of the uh, electronic stuff that I'm going to work on, but you see here, this is the motor mount for the body motor, uh, which attaches right here. Uh, as the designs are currently, uh, it calls for a 12 volt motor. And the drives, as you might recall, are 24 volt motors. And if you've seen my video on R2-D2 electronics, you'll know that I really don't like running voltages, any more voltages than I absolutely need to. Uh, and uh, apparently a couple of the builders that built the V1 B2 did modify those files to accommodate 24 volt body motors. But those files have not yet been made available to the final release folder. And I'm not sure if I'm going to need a new base to accommodate a larger gear. Um, it kind of just depends on how all that stuff goes. So uh, unfortunately, that's kind of the next step on the body stuff. So I'm going to have to wait until that's resolved before I can continue with that. But in the meantime, um, I am looking forward to diving into the electronics here. There's not a whole lot of room for B2's uh, electronics. Let me kind of show you how all this fits together. So here he is with the lower body lift mech uh, put into place. This entire structure is actually held in with uh, six magnets that attach to the structure underneath. Um, you'll notice that there are a lot of magnets used in this build. So there's three of them on this Lazy Susan. Those are going to hold the body detail that you'll see when it's spinning. Uh, there will be magnets attached front and back on all the drives. Those will hold the shells in place. We've got body magnets here. Uh, we've got these additional magnets. Um, up there and those are all going to be holding uh, body panels on with the idea being that uh, it's going to give us really easy access to get uh, into the internals of b2 uh, for whatever reason we might have and then speaking of the internals there really is not a whole lot of room in here um, down here you've got only about three inches of vertical clearance so um, even voltage regulators are going to have a hard time fitting in there you do have these channels uh, that's a likely place for batteries, uh, especially if we're going with LiPo batteries. I'm also considering using uh, relays for the motors. Those could also conceivably fit in there. It's possible that some components maybe could reside on other levels of B2, but uh, I'm really not sure yet as I haven't put them together really how much space there's going to be. So I'll just have to discover that for myself. Um, in the meantime, though, the build continues to be a ton of fun. Uh, despite the enormous variety of hardware that's required for this. Uh, I've made several orders to McMaster Car, um, several trips to my local hardware store. Um, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, but uh, the end result is, is pretty cool. I'm, I'm loving this so far. So I do hope to have uh, another update for you on electronics um, before too long. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.